warnings and advisories. Heat index is going to be near 110. We continue to see these advisories and warnings get extended. Obviously, we are dealing with a prolonged heat wave. A dangerous heat wave over the area. It is only going to get worse. An excessive heat warning continues into the, the week of dangerous heat. Ongoing heat advisory for today. Sunday evening, so if you do have those plans that are out, okay, you get sure it. It's hot out here. And my AC just went out in my studio, so I'm packing up and moving my stuff downstairs for the next couple weeks until I get my AC replaced. And since I'm back on the couch, it made me think about how I used to practice a lot on the couch and how some of that practice was really, really helpful and some of it was just a complete waste of time. You see, in 2008, this book came out that said it takes 10,000 hours of practice to become an expert in any field. And although that's a huge number, it really seemed achievable, especially since I thought I could just practice while watching TV and just noodle around, just collecting these hours over several years. But in reality, the concept the 10,000 hour rule was really misunderstood. It's not just 10,000 hours of noodling on the couch because most of your practice actually needs to be very highly focused. So just noodling around is not really gonna make you better. But there are some situations where a less focused practice routine can still be very helpful. So one of the first examples where this is really useful is when you're a beginner, and you're trying to first gain dexterity and mind-muscle connection to the fingers. This is something that I call activating the fingers. And the most famous exercise for this is something that's called the spider exercise. It's something that I used to call the one, two, three, four exercise. And it's basically where you're playing each finger on each string, just going up one fret at a time like this. And you can start this exercise anywhere, meaning right now I'm in the fourth position. You could start in the first position. And this will give you like a bigger stretch with the left hand. And when you get to the top, you're gonna go down. Now I have mixed feelings about this exercise because if you are past the beginner stage where you have activated your fingers already, doing this exercise is kind of a waste of time. It's really the world's least musical exercise that's ever existed. It's not a scale, it's almost a chromatic scale, but not quite. Once you get to a certain point where your fingers have become activated, it's not going to give you the same benefits anymore. Just like with the law of diminishing returns, you can see that at the beginning, this exercise is gonna help a lot. It's gonna help activate the fingers, but at a certain point, it's really gonna start hurting you because it's not musical in any way. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to switch to doing scales instead because that could be way more musical and you're gonna get a lot more out of your time that way. And we're gonna come back to that in a moment. Also, playing scales will still help to work on coordination between the hands and work on dexterity and activating the mind-muscle connection between your brain and the fingers. Number two is gonna be when you're practicing patterns. So. Let's focus on right hand patterns. The song that I was playing at the beginning of this video is called Etude One by Hater Villa Lobos. This is a really advanced example of a pattern that your hand is just gonna play the same pattern through the different chords. So if you're just starting off or you're a beginner or early intermediate, a better way to get into right hand patterns would be these with the Giuliani 120 right hand studies. Giuliani was a classical guitarist and composer who came up with these 120 right hand studies to help develop classical guitarists' right hands. But it's every single exercise is just the C chord going to a G7 and back. And some of these exercises are really, really advanced and they're kind of overkill. And what I did in my course, Your Finger Style Guide, is I broke these down into the most valuable exercises. I also made some variations for more modern style playing. Let me give you a couple examples of how this sounds. A really great starter right hand exercise is just an up and down arpeggio. So what we're gonna do here is assign our fingers to the thumb on the A string, and then the fingers can stay on strings one, two, three. We're just gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 That's just one example. Another example might be something like this. And you can see these sound very exercise-like and they're not super fun to play. 
And so that's why I broke them down into the essentials so that you don't have to struggle your way through 120 exercises that aren't gonna be super helpful. Another pattern I teach a lot is something called boom chuck. And that's where you're just taking an alternating bass pattern with a thumb and going through different chord progressions. There's a lot of things that you need to know about how to get the right tone and things like that. But first, just to activate the thumb and get some thumb independence from the fingers, you need to spend a lot of time just kind of going through these exercises, meaning just getting time doing this. We want to be able to do it so much that we can play it without really thinking about it. Because we want to think about really what the left hand is doing and also what the fingers are doing. So you can't really think about what your thumb is doing, otherwise you're just going to get stuck. So practicing simple boom chuck exercises will help you get better thumb independence from those fingers. There's only really two patterns that ever come up in boom chuck. Either you're starting a chord on the lowest sixth string root, like for example an E major chord. And the pattern will be like this, sixth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. Now one thing I want to add right away, when you do boom chuck, it's not really just sixth string to fourth string. When you do the boom to chuck part, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, the chuck part is actually bigger than just one string. Almost always when you see it written in tabs, especially for songs, it's just going to be written as one string. And it's kind of up to you to know that we need to make that a bigger chuck, like this. Okay? And that's pattern one. Pattern two will kind of be the same thing, but in reverse. For chords like C or A minor or A major, chords that start on the A string root. And that's where we're going to start on the fifth string, and we're going to go fifth string, fourth string, third string as the chuck and then alternate to the sixth string and then chuck. So boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. So that's another pattern you can practice and just rack up hours, gaining your thumb independence. Another example to practice on the couch would be fretboard mapping. And that's where we're practicing scales, but we're actually just kind of thinking about it, where these scales connect, things like doing minor pentatonic. practicing through the different boxes up and down the neck. Now again, be very careful about how you play and practice these scales. A lot of people get caught up just practicing the scale up and down, and this is one of the worst things that you can do. It helps you at first to kind of memorize the shape. But at a certain point, you're just kind of playing the scale up and down and you need to put it in a more musical context. One thing I like to practice is like a Junior Kimbrough style monotonic blues. That way you can just get the thumb going like this on a string, on a root note, here on the A string, and then practice the scale on top of that. Something like this. And it's just a way that you can kind of make it a little bit more musical instead of just going up and down a scale. And number four is not necessarily an exercise, but this is something that a lot of people do when they're playing on the couch. It's creative writing. So trying to take chords and just pair them up in kind of creative ways. Now at first you can just go through what we call diatonic progressions and just see how they sound. But then you can start adding chords that are maybe outside meaning they're not part of the key of the song. But you can still kind of get creative and just kind of guess. And then you can just practice playing different chords and trying to get creative, seeing where maybe your creativity leads you, just doing different style chords. Right? And getting creative with it and just trying to write different chord progressions, things like that. Or you can write anything. And this is a really important part of practicing the guitar and it's also one of the most fun things. So getting creative is something that's very helpful on the couch and I certainly recommend to do that as well. There's four ways that you can ensure that your practice is going to be making you better when you're playing on the couch instead of making you worse. Check out this video over here and you might be surprised that your practice actually could be making you worse. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys over there.